my honest opinion of it is, is that Ross Grey has been left on the back burner for a long, long time. You drive through Nina, you drive through Burr, they're booming towns. And Ross Grey has been left in the hands of a local <laughs> TD. I'll mention no names, but I think everybody knows who I'm talking about. And he's just made a shambles of everything, an absolute shambles of everything. And um, we need better people, better TDs in Ross Grey that will stand up to their word and help Ross Grey and try and build. It needs to be built from the ground up now. Yeah, like it's, I don't know, I suppose it's, in the, when you look at RTE now, it's kind of been broadcast as being like kind of racist and all that kind of stuff, but mm. it's just normal people. Um, yeah. Like it's not that they're not welcoming them, the people, it's a yeah. small town, so like it's not really fair in that sense. And then the hotel then, you have regular people that are working to lose their jobs overnight. It's not really kind of fair. That's kind of, that's why you see so many people out there and why the community is so behind them then as well. I hate to see it happening because a lot of my friends do actually work in the hotel so they've all lost their jobs. Well they've gone in for meetings to see if they have their jobs or not. They're being told they have to be garavetted if they want to work there so it's going to be a long process so I don't know. And what about like uh, refugees coming into the town? What Have you got any opinions on that? It's not that I'm against it, it's just Ross Grey has done a lot over the last two years for them. Like We've rebuilt the convent um, secondary school building for them and now we've lost our only hotel in the town. Right. to house 160 of them. What would be your concerns then if, if more are to come in? That we'll have nowhere to put them and that we're losing our only hotel and there's going to be no accommodation for even Ross Grey residents, right. let alone refugees. Now there was far right groups brought down from different places and um, we did, we'd ask, we'd ask them to leave. Local women and men asked them to leave. We, did, really? we don't want any part of that. And then for that minister to go on and say that uh, <laughs> He reported to the guards and then he ran to social media, which of course he did straight away, um, to say that uh, we wanted to set fire to the hotel. What good is a burnt down hotel? We were there to fight for our hotel. Um, it was absolutely just an absolute joke. Um, looking for brown and pints, I suppose. I don't know what he was up to, but to say that he done that now, he's finished. He committed political suicide, in my opinion. It was absolutely atrocious. Not about race. I have mixed race children. And I've been called racist, I've been called all sorts. I don't care, I'm standing up for my town, we've had enough. We're left to think, what? what's this, a dumping ground? It's been put down last year, the year before there, as a disadvantaged town. Mm -hmm. So oh, here, the government sees that, here, just throw them in there. Yeah. With no idea of what's going to happen, the consequences down the road. It's crazy. I suppose it's just uh, losing that hotel, like that hotel will be used for, like, say, for local clubs, if they win things, um, they can have your, your dinner dances, all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. outside. And then it's just more just employment, really, because there's probably 50, 60 people working out there. I don't, I don't know for sure now, but mm. there's quite a few people that have just lost their jobs overnight, kind of. Mm. And then there's not a huge amount of jobs in the area as it mm. is. So and My friends have lost their jobs and they were only told to tip FM on the Thursday morning. That's how they found out? That's how they found out. And the managers didn't even know it was just the owners that knew. So no one was actually known about losing their jobs, only through the news, like. Yeah. So yeah. that was really it. There was no dialogue whatsoever. We got the call that the bus was coming and as the bus was coming up the road that's when out of nowhere the guys the police from the guards from dublin came the riot squad and just descended on the people we were making a human chain um, and if somebody had stepped out of that bus and said look there's children here there's children can we get the children through by all means the ross Gray people would let the children through people were there from ross Gray with their children as well in buggies there was toddlers there and they didn't need to see what they seen either while I feel sorry for those children that were brought into the hotel and as a gesture of goodwill for the last couple of days we've been bringing toys, food, clothes into those children. They'll be looked after like all the rest of the refugees and asylum seekers have been looked after in Ross Grey in the past. Okay. Uh, it was just the underhanded way the government went about this right. and the way the hotel owners went about it was absolutely atrocious. Well naturally when people come and push against you in a violent, very violent manner, myself I got an elbow to the ribs and when my arm broke free by from the other side Girl. by the riot squad. And when my arm broke free, they twisted my arm behind my back and threw me against the wall. And as that was happening, that's when they disbanded the two families from the bus. And they practically just pushed those people through. Now, the Ross Grey people didn't push those people through the crowd. The riot squad did. And the rest of the people that were on the bus, they then backed the bus back a little bit. They pulled into the back of the hotel and disbanded the rest of the people. We couldn't see who got out of the bus. But why did they let the two families out at the front? and then let the rest in the back. When they could have done that, they would have pushed the crowd back anyway. Mm -hmm. So they could have let those two families stay on the bus and got them out of the back of the hotel and them children wouldn't have had to witness what they witnessed. The youngsters in the hotel, the teenagers that are working in the hotel part-time, were told they'd have a job if they um, agreed to get Garda vetted to mind the children that were coming to the hotel, to mind people who are not being vetted. Makes no sense. But uh, this, is, this is where they stood 
and just the fact that it was the last hotel, it's a tourist town, there's only nine beds available in Rossgrave now for anyone who's staying and it's just absolutely atrocious and then to listen to prime time last night, fair play to Miriam, um, they're going to buy a hotel after closing one down. It just makes absolutely no sense. And what is a community hotel? We're not being explained. Again, the Rossgrave community are left in the dark. We don't know what's going on.